Hey guys, so today, yo, whoop, we got a guest. Well, what you want? What you want? Hmm? What? What? You just barking on stuff? Why you bark bark so much? You're a borker. Hey guys, yeah, just ignore that rude introduction from Luca there. But um, today is going to be a little bit of a different type of video. We haven't had kind of like a one-on-one -on -one talk in a while. I feel like this is kind of good to touch bases with everybody again. Um, it's been just such a long time. It feels almost weird talking one-on-one -on -one with you guys again, kind of like we're gonna have a little sleepover party or something. I just put my hand in drool. So first thing that I did want to bring up real quick, cause I'm sure, you know, the way I've got this video set up is some of you will just want the beginning information. Some of you want the latter information. So first things first, I really wanted to touch on what you'll see in the next two months on the channel because it's been a while since I kind of told you what to expect, what games we'll be playing together. Um, and then secondly, I want to go ahead and update you guys on my health in general because some of you were really interested in hearing how I've been, how has my overall health been since that video that I made. I think almost, what has it been, two years ago? If if you guys are new to the channel or you guys don't know about it, go ahead. I will link it in the description down below. You can watch it if you want to, um, to update you on the health issues that I do have. What you're going to be seeing on the channel in the next two months, we have to wrap up Dark Souls 3, and I don't really know how long that's going to take me exactly. I mean, it's, it's a hard game. It takes a while for you to get through a boss. Um, long hours of sitting and filming to get through that game, so it could be last the entirety of the month. I'm not really sure. I'm hoping that I can finish it, but we will see you guys. Um, Star Wars will almost be finished as well. So that's what you can expect in the next month. But then after that, we have a lot more exciting stuff. We have RE3 remake coming out, which I really am so terrified to play, but also pretty excited for. And then we have Final Fantasy VII remake, which I'm, I just played the demo guys and is fucking fantastic. I'm super pumped now. Like, I'm I'm really excited. I needed that bit of a taste of the demo to fully pull me in and I'm I'm sold. I'm sold. So that will be exciting for us to play as well. So all in all, that's what you can expect in the meantime. You know, obviously we have The Last of Us 2 coming out this year. We have Cyberpunk and that's another game I really look forward to. Now onto the more heavy side of the video talking about my health and where I've been and how I've been and all of that stuff. To be honest, I actually filmed, it, I, I struggle to talk about my health issues actually. I filmed an updated health video probably about two weeks ago and I just sat on it because it's this weird bit of, I don't know, you don't wanna be seen as being negative as well as showing weakness and vulnerability is really hard to talk about and I hate that sometimes I get that way. I start to kind of retract and isolate myself from everybody when I'm feeling horrible. It's partially because I just don't know what to do. Like I don't want to complain. I don't want to be seen as a, a weak person or any of that sort. And it's such a like wrong way to think about it because it's, it's not that you're not weak for going through chronic pain or going through the mental or physical issues that you have, the struggles you have, you're actually very strong. And being able to talk to you guys about it not only gives me strength, but it helps give you strength. It, it builds awareness. There are so many people that haven't experienced any health issues at all, whether it is mental or physical. And because of that, you know, it's a little bit harder for them to understand what it's like living with everyday issues. It's just this weird mentality that growing up I've always kind of I don't I don't like to ask for help um I, I just feel wrong for doing so almost and I don't I don't like to show weakness I don't I don't want to be seen as being too negative or um I don't know just a downer I do know that that is the wrong mentality to have so I still struggle with that every day kind of breaking out of that mold because honestly being able to talk to you guys about the things that I go through health-wise is more therapeutic than anything, you know, especially since this whole community has grown so much because of them, you know, and because we all share something similar, whether it be just, it doesn't have to be a specific health issue, like just a struggle in life in general. Like we've all 
had our ups and downs. We've all been through rough times to some extent in some way, whatever, and that's totally subjective. What one person considers a really hard struggle versus what they consider a really light struggle, it's, it's all just so subjective and it's so personal to the individual. I mean, it's like, and I can't remember if I brought this up the last time I filmed. Maybe I can even like insert the picture, but I always think of this it's not really a meme, but it was like this picture and it had, it has a big wolf on it with like thousands of arrows in its back and it's still standing. And then it shows like a baby wolf and it has one arrow in its back and it's knocked to the ground and it just says pain is relative. And I saved that picture because it felt, I don't know, it was just made so much sense to me. Um, and it seems like something that a lot of people forget that we all handle things totally differently. Some people can handle more than others. So yeah, I'm kind of going off right now on just realizing, saying that I realize I shouldn't feel that way. No one should feel like they are weaker because they talk about it. It's just some sort of societal thing that we put on ourselves to feel like it's weak to talk about these things when it's really not and it actually brings more people together when we can open up and talk about this stuff and I feel like this community in and of itself just proves that over and fucking over again you guys like I'm so blessed to have all of you and to have met all of you and, and I know that a majority of you who are watching right now are probably the same people who watched the initial video and stayed with me and supported me through and fucking through. So my health the past, I'd say three months has not been the greatest, to be honest. I feel like right now in this week, I'm starting to kind of take it back into my own hands and it, it's starting to feel a little bit more like I'm myself, but for about two months or so, it was absolute hell, I won't lie. And a lot of it was kind of my fault as well. I mean, when you have chronic pain, you have to stay on top of things. If you don't stay on top of things, you will, it's like a slippery slope. You'll slowly keep going down, you'll hit back at the bottom again um, where you have the pain every day and, and even the most basic stuff. For those of you who don't know, I do have scoliosis, an S-shaped curve in my spine. I have degenerative discs in my low back, arthritic changes going on through my neck. So because of all of that and things kind of being off balance, um, I deal with a lot of nerve pain, random body aches. I get a lot of what feels like arthritis. Like I, I personally just think I straight up have it. I feel some days like I am 90 years old um, and you guys, I'm 28. So just because those things are off balance, I do have to do a lot of things to counter it. You know, there is no fix for scoliosis unless you get surgery and it's not, I would, I'm not to that point, you know, like if it was something where I could not get out of bed, of course I would look into it, but it's one thing I do want to preface before going and talking about this is I don't really want you guys to start suggesting all the things that I could do to help. And I know you guys are just being helpful, but um, I take my health into my own hands. I know what works for me and that I have just basically fallen off doing those things. So it's my own damn fault. And I don't really need advice on what to do um, or what has really helped you necessarily. I don't know how to put it other than it's just super overwhelming because it, it makes it seem like I'm asking for help and I'm really not. I'm just kind of updating you guys, if that makes sense. So I'd say around last year, British Columbia trip, I was super in shape guys I was so in shape like I worked out all the time I only did the chiropractor once a month but the chiropractor is an absolute for me to help snap me back into place so I can function as a human being basically after that trip I just fell off my exercising I got too busy I got too overwhelmed with life in general and doing so much for myself I mean that it just it feels like there hasn't really been much of a break if I'm not working I am running errands for the house, for the animals, and it's kind of like everything kind of relies on me, you know, um, which I'm not complaining about. I, I actually really like working. I hate editing. Editing can kiss my ass, but I really like working. I like filming, but I want to feel my best when I'm filming. My best self is when I feel good. When I'm not feeling good, I feel like you guys can see it in my videos that... I just don't have the energy levels and we'll, we'll get into all that stuff. Um, 
that you guys, you know that I just start talking when I make these videos. I don't have anything written down, you know, the points to talk about. We just talking and shit's gonna get all over the place. So basically after British Columbia, I stopped working out. Um, I, I kind of started to eat things that I shouldn't be eating. Part of helping myself was becoming gluten-free. That, I'm not kidding guys, fixed about 90% of my pain levels, at least the excruciatingly bad ones, like the burning pain in my joints and throughout like my arms and legs and my spine, it totally eliminated that inflammation, which was awesome. So I can't eat gluten and I've had, I don't eat dairy as well. I haven't eaten dairy in a really long time. Um, but I started to eat other things. Basically certain foods are more inclined to create inflammation in your body. There are things like nightshades, which are certain types of vegetables, I think, Eggplants and tomatoes can count as them. Bell peppers um, can cause inflammation. Coffee can even cause inflammation. But I've given so much fucking shit up that I'm not giving coffee up, okay? I will give up everything else. Well, except for wine. Wine also can cause inflammation. Sad life. So I don't drink very often. And my guilty pleasure is coffee. And I allow myself that. But there are a lot of things that I stay away from to help kind of curve that pain and I just kind of stopped caring as much and pushing that boundary, eating bell peppers again, eating like random things that you would think wouldn't be too bad but actually are kind of bad. Um, so that inflammation started building back up again and when I don't work out on a regular basis, I feel it and I, I feel it like really badly, guys. All of the arthritis pain start coming back and I start to get so sore from sitting in the chair and um, my computer is fucking flipping, guys. Do you hear it? So I start to really feel it in my back. Like even right now, just sitting, I've been sitting for, um, I'd say like an hour and a half to, to almost two hours. I can feel it in my low back that the pressure on my joints just from sitting for too long is starting to get really tense and tight. I need to go stretch after this as well. Um, but when I stop working out and those muscles get weak to try to like hold everything together, it just gets worse and worse and worse. And the worst part is when you stop working out at first, you know, you still have those muscles. So you're kind of like, well, I can get away with this. And then you don't really catch that this shit is affecting you until you're full blown affected and you can't really function as a person. I mean, it, it got really bad guys and I really don't know if y'all noticed, but I stopped uploading as often. Um, I stopped even being on social media as often because like when I, when I start to feel really bad, I mean like it's all encompassing as well. Like it kind of takes over my life a little bit. It kind of felt like over the course of those two months that I was sleepwalking in a way, like it feels like you just, you never wake up. You get this fog in your brain from like everything being out of whack and your body just constantly being in pain, not being able to sleep well because I shit you not, it was like, it was like every morning that I had woken up, I'd been hit by a truck is the best way to explain it. Like overnight, some truck had just ran me over and then you wake up and instead of feeling refreshed, you're at a pain score of like nine out of 10. I can tell you right now that I always get a little emotional when I start to think about it, but like it's easy to get back into that mental state of why me and why do I have to go through this? And it just became so much to deal with, you know, trying to heal myself as well as trying to trying to maintain the channel and keep putting out content that you guys really enjoy because there is a lot of time what I kind of touched on earlier that I felt like I wasn't myself when I was filming um, because I didn't feel so good because I felt like I was out of it and I really am sorry if that was something you noticed in the videos at all <laughs> over the course of like the last two to three months. The community and the channel has always been my number one priority for everything and when I feel like I'm not doing enough for you guys, it really, it really upsets me. And I know, I know you guys are gonna be like, you really don't have to feel bad. Um, we understand and I know you understand, but it's like this 
part of me, you know? I enjoy doing it and I'm, I'm stubborn as fuck. I'm never gonna think any differently, you know? That I always want to do more. I always want to give more and help people more. And when I'm not myself, it just, yeah, I don't know why I didn't talk to you guys about it. I know now that I should have just been honest and open with you guys and stop feeling like I was going to be seen as weak or as complaining um, about my life or like my issues because it's not like, it's not like what I go through is any worse than anybody else's. And I know that there's always going to be people that fucking judge. They're, they're just always going to be someone that's like, oh, you're crying about this health issue, but this health issue is worse type of thing. Um, And you know what? Fuck it. If you want to judge me for having the chronic pain that I do have, fuck it. You could go right ahead and do it. But I do need to stop isolating myself from being able to open other people's eyes to it, who, people who are more understanding, people who are more likely to grow or expand their way of thinking from it. So basically because I was struggling to really function, I mean, I was struggling to even get out of the house and do groceries, I was struggling with being able to take care of the animals, I was struggling with being able to keep up with the channel for a bit, um, I decided to go back to the chiropractor and he redid all of my x-rays, which thank God that he did because it kind of showed me where I'm at as well as, you know, told him what he needs to do for me. Like at the moment, I've been on weekly chiropractic adjustments for eight weeks, I think it is. And then it will go bi-weekly until it can eventually be monthly again. Yeah, the chiropractor absolutely saved me and it's probably, it's the one thing that I will always go back to. I will never, ever, ever live without a chiropractor. I'll probably need it the rest of my life. This is just me speaking from personal experience what has helped me, and it does not mean that it will help you guys and that you guys should run out and go schedule an appointment with anybody. Like, you guys need to talk to your doctor before doing anything of the sort, as well as for some people, it might not even work. So I just want to make sure you guys are taking this as this is what I've done for myself, this is my experience, and that's it. I'm not giving advice, I'm just telling you what I do to help myself and what helped me back in the day. But yeah, when we looked at the x-rays again from the chiropractor, what was three problem areas years ago when I first started going was now four problem areas, so I thought that that was kind of interesting that my body kind of added on another one to be like, okay, this area is starting to be stressed a lot. Um, Certain issues had come back as well as showed some changes. My spine literally curves like an S. So because of that, everything is out of alignment. Like you need your spine to kind of act like a spring to support your head. And when things start to get unbalanced, your body will start to try to balance itself naturally. Like I'm pretty sure it's this shoulder. Yeah, this shoulder is a little bit higher than this one. A lot of times, like, I start to notice that it's slightly different. One of my hips is just a bit slightly different as well and being a little bit higher than the other one. And um, my neck, oh my god, my neck is still, it wants to be stick straight because my scoliosis is pulling it in a way to be stick straight and your neck should have a curve like this where your head sits because if you don't have that, your neck and your spine is just taking the full force of the weight of your head. Your, your head is like so fucking heavy, you guys. So when I looked at my neck, it was still stick straight again. I had some pre-arthritic changes in the lower cervical spine. Um, so that curve has to be put back into it the best that they can. Um, and then I had some issues in my thoracic spine, which is about the mid back right where it starts to make the upper curve. I had two issues in my low back still, but that's not news to me. I had degenerative disc long ago from all of that stuff, so that was still there as well. The one good thing was it didn't necessarily say that I had gotten totally worse. It just shows that if I don't take care of myself, it can progressively get worse. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of opened my eyes to how much damage I was doing to myself by not taking care of myself, by not going to the chiropractor regularly or exercising regularly or eating as well as I could be. Even when I do all those things, I still struggle with chronic pain off and on. Some days it's like you wake up and you feel pretty damn okay. And then the next day you don't know what the fuck happens, but you're just 
you're just annihilated, you know, like you can't even function as a person. You have to like tap out on the entire day. It's weird how that happens, you know, and I'm sure that there are certain certain things that probably trigger it worse than others, but sometimes it feels like it's just random. I'd probably be barely holding it together this entire talk. Um, I would have been a sobbing mess because I really wasn't doing that well, you know, I wasn't coping well with it. But the good news is that I am slowly taking my health back. The chiropractor weekly has slowly been helping me, eating better. I need to get back on working out a little bit more. <laughs> um, winter has not been kind to me. I just struggle to have the energy sometimes. Like, I need the sun. I feel like I am like a plant. I need to, like, I'm not shitting you guys. I sit in the sun every morning just to like soak in the rays, not to tan or any of that bullshit. I just need to feel the warmth on my skin and the vitamin D and then I'm ready to go for the rest of the day. I'm good to go. But winter ha is it's just been like horrible on my energy levels as well. I think one thing that going through all of these struggles always reminds me about is to be grateful for the health that you do have and appreciate the little things that you can do. It's easy to take for granted what we're capable of. I, I'll admit when I was feeling really great last year and strong last summer, I kind of took for granted my health. Not that I had forgotten where I came from, but you feel better. So you don't really think about the lows as often. And then when it hits you in the face again, it's just this reminder of like how important that is. It's so fucking important. And I think it's also like a good reminder that we don't know what everybody around us is going through, you know, like the lady at the store or the guy down the street, they might look fine, but maybe they're going through their own struggles themselves. One thing that always kind of helps pull me out of the really lows, because, you know, we all go through that self-pity, questioning why me type of feeling, and I think that's human. There's nothing wrong with that. It's finding a way out of it and not staying stuck in that mindset because when you get stuck in that mindset, you grow bitter, you grow fucking angry and resentful and whatever other emotions come along with it that can be so negative. I think finding a positive, even when it seems so hard to find, is a good way to help pull you out of that mentality. You know, every time I go through these, I go through that low point of thinking that and then I remember how my health issues have made me who I am today. I would not be doing this with you guys. I wouldn't have created an entire community based around that mentality and the love for each other and understanding that we've all gone through some sort of low point in our life. Mental, physical, whatever the case, we've all been there and we can show respect to each other in that regard and support each other. I wouldn't have had the courage to start making YouTube videos and hoping to reach people through games and through, you know, that kind of support. I wouldn't be who I am today. And half the decisions that I've made, I wouldn't be so empathetic or sympathetic. I, I just feel like my entire outlook on life has totally changed. And I'm so fucking grateful that I've gotten the opportunity to do all of this and to meet all of you and to hopefully spread that awareness to you guys as well. We are all so much stronger than we realize we are. You know, I chronically feel like I am not very strong, actually, and I get that comment a lot, um, even from friends, like people in my life, that I'm one of the strongest people that they know. I'm not this bundle of positivity all the time. I do go through my negative moments, but I think grounding yourself and finding that positive something, having the support from the people around you, being able to talk to each other, to just, sometimes we just need to rant, you know? Like, sometimes you just need to let it out into the world um, to be free of it. I think that that is the most important part in finding that strength again and realizing you are strong. I cannot begin to express to you how much this channel has given me um and i'll probably start crying but i just i can't i can't begin to explain to you the worth that it's given me the motivation that it's given me i feel like this talk was 
all over the place. Honestly, I feel like this was all over the place. I had no rhyme or reason to what <laughs> what I was saying and when I was saying it. Just a bunch of like random thoughts pouring out. Yeah, I guess in a nutshell, that's kind of where my health has been. A little bit of a health update. I still deal with chronic pain all the time. My back right now is fucking killing me. I'm a stretch after this. Um, I just don't talk about it a whole lot. I really hope that you guys are doing all right. The massive amounts of people who commented on that last health video and kind of told me, you know, where they're at and the things that they go through and gave me so much love, like so much fucking love. I remember crying from the comments from that video for weeks, months even. Sometimes I'd still get a random comment that would just like, just tears. But I hope that things are okay for you guys as well, that you all have found some sort of support or um, people to talk to. Again, like I said, if you ever want to join the Discord, please feel free. The link is in the description down below where there's so many awesome people on there and you don't even necessarily have to talk about the things that you go through, but just being able to talk to people in general and kind of get your mind off it sometimes is the best therapy. I feel like if I keep talking, I'm just gonna end up rambling and kind of repeating myself. <laughs> like, I'm at that point where I feel it. I feel it, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen soon. Make sure you check out some of the links in the description. I'll have all that info down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and thanks for watching, guys.